Right, so fast food franchise is a game that I won. I got a yep. full web, and you it's did. it's basically just Monopoly. This game is Monopoly. You roll the dice, you move around the board, you buy stuff, but instead of buying hotels, you sort of by this weird system put little squares of your cha- of your you know fast food franchise in this grid in the middle of the board. And if you are able to connect your grid, and I was able to, I picked the ice cream, which has the most possible. Uh, squares. Yep. Because they're not. It's it's not symmetrical, right? It's you know if you choose the fancy one that pays out more, you get less squares to work with. I picked ice cream. Had the but ice cream, scream. J- right. Just randomly, I picked ice cream, but it had the most squares, so I was able to f- make a full one hundred percent connection between all of my ice creams on the entire board with a full web. So anyone who landed on my ice cream had to give me a million dollars, and when I passed go, I got like a zillion dollars. And the only thing that separates this from Monopoly is actually pretty big deal is that number one you get eliminated fast if you land on my ice cream when i'm set up like that you just die yeah that's <laughs> the way i describe it take monopoly and it's almost I, I, and you get a you get a ton of money when you pass go yep. if you've got stuff set up and if you get a million dollars you just win but so like I, it's imagine monopoly ended after like 20 minutes but it's basically the same game with a very small amount of decision making well the thing is so i would say that this is almost a deconstruction of monopoly or a game like that uh but no, a deconstruction of monopoly would be mad magazine the board game well but what i was about to say if you deconstruct something this is where you're trying to lose all your money <laughs> no but it's it's almost too close to Monopoly and too true to the feelings of Monopoly to... It's not like Monica, where you took you know the Magical Girl genre and said, oh, wait a minute, Monica when I go. look at it from another <laughs> angle. I should watch that. This is more like Again. Monopoly, look at it from this like pure, distilled angle where it'll give you a lot of the feels that Monopoly would give you, but in a much more streamlined, elegant, fast failure model where... It has the snowball of Monopoly, but then just as the snowball crests the peak, game over. It's done. Like, uh, in both games that I played of this, I got eliminated. I was just out. And you know what? In Monopoly, you're eventually just out. Eventually. Yeah, but eventually. In this game, like, you're eliminated the second you can't come back anymore. Like, within one more go around of the board, you're just out because you land on someone else's chicken surprise and everything's over. Yep. And you just quit. And it's... It's oddly liberating because Monopoly is a game that I do you, not enjoy playing. You get just trapped in Monopoly because you're. It's like you've already lost, but you have to keep playing because you're not eliminated, but you didn't yep. officially lose yet. But at the same time, fast food. Fra- uh, but Monopoly at the same time, it's it's weird how it scratches a few itches around nostalgia and also like some of the gameplay mechanics. Like it scratches a few itches. But then it punches you in the dick repeatedly while it's scratching Fast you. Fast food franchise is just like Fast food franchise hey, pats you on the back like it's You can't win that anymore, itch. fine, stop playing. Yeah. And like, oh, congratulations, you won, stop playing. Like Fast Food Franchise walks over and says, Hey, do you have that itch that says, Hey, maybe I should play Monopoly? It scratches that itch really, really good, and then it walks away. I think the thing it's missing that Monopoly has is the sort of like dog boat. Mr. Monopoly, go to jail. Uh, it has that because it's got Chicken Surprise. Yeah, but Chicken Surprise isn't as good as like, oh, go to jail, do not pass go. Are you kidding? Chicken Surprise. You're or running a fast food franchise er- you don't that have- is called Chicken Surprise. and You you don't have to- bank error in your favor. Guys, you have to click on the link and look at what this game looks like. You, we don't have like about win- that. you don't have win the beauty pageant. The, the, yes, you do. On those cards. Oh, isn't, it, oh, isn't it second place in beauty pageant? Or yeah. Something? yeah. <laughs> but... The, the aesthetic of this game be no been, railroad, take a ride, bitch. Has been variously described by people I've shown it to as interesting, minimalist, what the fuck, that is horrible. Right, well, because this was a small press game from the 90s, right? It's, yeah. It's old. So if you think about, like, you know, the, the, uh, the relative production value of, like, indie game, indie tabletop games today to, you know, the super professional ones... Think about what an indie tabletop board game looked like in the but 90s. But Scott, the logo of Chicken Surprise is so wonderful that that is the equivalent of the top hat. It's not a battleship blowing up a top hat. I think it's on the same level. Yeah, well. I don't. I, maybe I'm just really into Chicken Surprise. I want to make a T-shirt. That's I'm, just also, that c- I'm also I'm also kind of into the you know Monopoly Dude, characters. No one remembers this game. You know what I'm gonna do? Because I've got Amazon merch. Just print I'm gonna one. make the Chicken Surprise T-shirt. It's gonna be that color, and it's just gonna be the Chicken Surprise logo blown up front and center, and that's it. 
Do it. I'm All gonna right, make that care. shirt on Amazon just so I can buy myself a copy of it. Shit talking is happening. Uh I don't think you understand how quickly I can make a t-shirt. Remember that listener who made that ugly fan art of us that I'm, for whatever reason, like really obsessed with? I don't know which ugly fan art that is. The one that's like stylized Ren and Stimpy looking versions of our faces? Maybe. Uh, there's a Dave and Joel one, too. Uh, I made a poll in the Patreon of, hey, if I made this Geek Nights t-shirt, would you buy it? And the resounding answer was, what the fuck, Rim? If everyone is already giving us money, they definitely want the t-shirt. No, they don't want the t-shirt because they, they hate the t-shirt. Emily looks at the design. She's like, no, no. But it Wasn't there a shirt where we were play, we were Dig Dug? Why don't we make that shirt? Ooh, I don't remember that one. Find me that one. I'll make that t-shirt. Someone made a fan art of us like a million yeah, years ago. I don't like have Like nine, it. ten years ago, we were Dig Dug. Find it for me and I'll make it. Because mm. I can, ma- I don't I can know, make it. I don't think it was high res enough to make a t-shirt. I, well... I could get someone to I redraw don't think, it. I don't think the colors are good enough either. Yeah, but I could get someone to redo it just in the concept. But Scott, I can make 250 t-shirts and just sell them on Amazon. Mm, if you want to buy a t-shirt with Dig Dug, but it's me. I'm making the chicken surprise shirt. And then I'm going to email. Oh, is this Tom Lehman? Who made this game? It was, I think it was Tom Lehman. Back, back, Lehman back. Brothers, Tom? No. Yeah, Tom Lehman. So I'll email him and be like, yo. I made a chicken surprise shirt. Do you want any money from it? <laughs> like, can I can I be the official distributor of chicken surprise t-shirts? <laughs> yeah, yeah, ask forgiveness instead of permission. Well, I'll make one because I I just want to buy it for myself. <laughs> so I have to put it in the marketplace, order it for myself on Amazon, and then I could just take it down. But I want to go to him and be like, look, can I make like one t-shirt for each of the franchises in this and be the official t-shirt franchisee of fast food franchise merchandise? 50 50 mm. profits let's go because mm. i re like ice cream scream is also a really good logo it's just like this minimalist guy yelling in an ice cream cone mm. but it's also like the graphic design is like really minimal and weird but at the same time it's kind of beautiful because you look at this map and you like this board and you're like what the fuck but then you realize that it's actually a surprisingly accurate map of the united states in a grid sure. and it is and it actually works out that way sure but i mean i don't want to really get into the mechanics because we're kind of just talking about our impressions of these games but fast food franchise is worth playing just get some people who are on your same wavelength find a copy of this game somehow good luck uh, find chris reimer <laughs> at any convention if you live in pennsylvania just track this dude down <laughs> knock on his door and be like yo Rim said I could play fast food franchise with you guys. I think this might be a useful game if you have a family that refuses to play a real game. You couldn't even get them to play Ticket to Ride. But it's but it's But you can get them to play Monopoly <laughs> and that way you can play this and that's the compromises. They'll play it and it won't take forever. This is both simpler and more complicated than Monopoly though. It's hard but to But someone who refuses to play Ticket to Ride but will play Monopoly could possibly be convinced to play this instead. But they might be scared be impro- away by the weird abstractness of it. It would be an improvement. But I think this is a good game to get, like, high rollers, Scott. Like, people like us or, like, Jared Sorensen or Chris Reimer and do a live stream Let's Play of this game, like, all in. I think this is mostly a game of luck. And you it's should weird. gamble on this game, and it would be a lot more interesting than gambling on other games that people usually no, gamble on. No, here's what we do. We play the game, and we all put up money, and we do a live stream. Play the but, game with real money. But... The, li- the YouTube live stream, we do a separate thing where it's basically salty bet and everyone is betting on which one of us is going to win. It's not exciting. Salty bet works because you can get a lot of bets on a lot of fights real quick. If this would be one long game, like 20 minutes, no one wants to bet on that. The kind of person who would be fascinated by this game is the kind of person who would be all in on that. You're getting two people. <laughs> anyway, seriously, if you if you care about game design at all, if you're into this stuff, if you're into tabletop, I'm not saying this is a good game. I am saying you should play it once and just see what's going on in there. Because... I enjoyed my time with this you game. You can just read the board game geek and see what's going on in I there. I don't think you can. Mm. I think you need to play it once and experience it. You're never going to find a copy, so it doesn't matter. And I guarantee at PAX Prime, you're going to see me wearing a Chicken Surprise t-shirt. Okay. <laughs>